Well, India and US have close relationship. Uh, we have seen high-level engagement. With me is Assistant Secretary for Economic and Business Affairs to talk about this relationship. So welcome to Beyond. It's a pleasure meeting you here in Delhi. And my first question to you, an obvious question, we're coming fresh out of the G20 foreign ministers meeting. How do you make uh, of the Indian presidency of this grouping, the Indian uh, leadership uh, having various uh, focus areas? Uh, if you can talk about how the Americans plan to strengthen that. Uh, well, the Indian presidency has, uh, of the G20 has really gotten off to an excellent start. Of course, there was the finance ministers and central bank governors meeting uh, several days ago. Uh, and today was the ministerial, this week I should say, was the ministerial for the foreign ministers. And uh, the Indian presidency set out a very ambitious agenda for our foreign ministers meeting and in fact set us the goal of produ producing um, a, uh, a summary and outcomes document for the foreign ministers for the first time. Mm -hmm. And our, through our discussions this week, we were able to reach uh, agreement among the entire group of 20 on issues to address very important uh, challenges in uh, health security, food security, and, um, and other critical challenges facing the global economy. So when it comes to uh, the outcomes of the G20 foreign ministers meeting, there was no joint statement, there was a chair statement and outcome documents. Do you see the divide between Russia and the West essentially impacting the outcomes when it comes to the G20 foreign ministers meeting? Well, we thought it was really regrettable that uh, China and Russia did not join the G20 consensus on two paragraphs that all G20 members had embraced uh, only three months ago in, uh, in the Bali uh, Leaders Declaration of the G20. Uh, and those two paragraphs were condemning the impact that the war in Ukraine uh, was having on the global economy, on global food security, on energy security, and it called for actions to uphold the system of international law including the principles of the UN Charter, principles of humanitarian law, including protecting civilians and uh, critical infrastructure. And we really regret that China and Russia were unwilling to join the rest of the G20 in upholding these principles and uh, recognizing the negative impact that the war in Ukraine was having on the global economy. Um, just uh, a week ago, the UN General Assembly passed a resolution with 141 votes uh, that uh, called for an end to this war on the principles and basis of the UN Charter uh, and, uh, and condemned the attacks against civilians and civilian infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, we're sorry to say that Russia and China are not part of this very strong global consensus on the negative impacts of, of the war. That being said, I commend the Indian presidency in formulating a consensus uh, among the entire 20 on an important agenda to the rest of the world, which is addressing issues of public health, food and energy security, uh, uh, effective cooperation against narcotics trafficking. And so uh, it's important that the, that the G20 continue to find areas to cooperate that are important to the welfare of the population of the world. So do you see this conflict, Russia-Ukraine conflict, uh, dominating or paralyzing the working of the G20 grouping? And amidst this, the, the voice of the global south being not heard properly in the grouping because of this divide within the grouping? Well, I think that countries in the emerging markets and developing world have made clear that it's, it's essential that we come together to address these problems that, that, um, that I've just enumerated, whether it's food and energy security, the impacts of climate change, uh, addressing uh, humanitarian relief, in particular in disaster areas. These problems are not going away. In, prob in fact, many of these problems have gotten worse because of, of uh, Russia's aggression against Ukraine. And so I think that it's important uh, that we continue to find ways to work in the G20 to address these collectively. And again, I commend the Indian presidency for keeping the focus on um, moving forward on areas that we can come together. Uh, Ambassador 
Uh, Abe Takar uh, at the Ministry of External Affairs very ably led the preparations for this meeting and helped bring us to a G20 consensus on addressing these important issues. And our uh, partners in the, the emerging markets and the developing uh, countries uh, want that, they expect that, and they legitimately expect that, and we need to continue to come together to address these important problems. Mm -hmm. So we're meeting at a time when the Quad Foreign Ministers met for the first time in Delhi. Where do you see the future of this grouping amidst a very, very aggressive China? Well, the, the, the statement, uh, I should say, the Chair's summary and the outcomes document really pointed the way ahead on some areas where we need to continue to build uh, on the G20 consensus in this year. And so I think that we're going to continue to work toward the leaders meeting in September uh, to uh, further elaborate our cooperation in the areas I've described. Let me give one example that's very important to the United States and it's becoming increasingly important around the world, which is the uh, increasing the, the cooperation on counter narcotics. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, the United States is experiencing very significant problems with synthetic drugs like fentanyl. Mm -hmm. uh, it's become, uh, drug overdoses have become the largest killer of Americans between the ages of 19 and 49. And what we're seeing around the world is that the United States, unfortunately, is at the front end of a wave of, of challenges with synthetic drugs, whether it's ketamine in East Asia, Captagon in the Middle East, methamphetamine, the names are different, but the, the scourge is uh, a challenge that all uh, that we think the global community is increasingly facing. And in this, this uh, G20 foreign ministers, it was put on the agenda of the G20 for the first time. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to carrying that work on uh, under the, under the uh, Indian presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, so while the G20 foreign ministers met, the, the Quad foreign ministers also met. So where do you see the future of Quad uh, uh, going forward to? Well, this is, uh, the Quad is very important because it shows how a subset of democracies in the world can also make progress on important issues. The Quad has been a very important uh, uh, forum of collaboration on addressing COVID-19, on addressing climate change, humanitarian and disaster relief. And so I think that this meeting uh, that happened earlier today, uh, and the, there was a session at the Ricina Dialogue among the, the four foreign ministers, demonstrates that the Quad also is a very effective forum for, for uh, uh, deepening the cooperation in these areas. Mm -hmm. uh, so, we have spoken about the Russia-Ukraine conflict, but uh, looking the worldview from Delhi will be different. India has co close relationship with Russia. Uh, how do you see this relationship uh, going forward to in terms of the global geopolitics? And uh, will there be any sanctions ever on India because first India has strong defense relationship with Russia uh, because of that? And of course, India importing energy from Russia. Well, um Prime Minister Modi has said today's era is not an era of war. And Foreign Minister Jai Shankar has talked about India uh, serving as a bridge uh, and trying to uh, use its influence with Russia to end this conflict. And we su strongly support uh, both of these sentiments because Russia's aggression of Ukraine uh, has been not only a tragedy for the people of Ukraine, um, because of this deliberate war on civilians and war crimes that Russia has committed inside of Ukraine, it's been a tragedy for people all around the world. People thousands of miles away are suffering increased uh, food insecurity, energy insecurity because of this war. And so it's important for all countries in, in the global system to use their influence to try to bring an end to this war, to alleviate not only the suffering in the war zone, but suffering of people around the world uh, that is the result of Russia's aggression. Mm -hmm. And uh, on the sanctions aspect, if India gets S-400, I mean, there are several batches who have already arrived. Will there be sanctions on India? Well, I don't want to talk about any specific sanctions um, of any kind. Um, I can say that one of the topics of discussion you mentioned Russia's relationship in uh, in uh, with with uh, uh, sorry India's relationship with Russia. One of the topics of discussion when Secretary Blinken met with Minister Jaishankar was increasing 
the technological and defense cooperation between the United States and India. Mm -hmm. On the technological cooperation, we saw the meeting happening on critical technologies. If you can elaborate on that, are we looking at some kind of major outcomes or deals perhaps in terms of that sector? Well, I don't want to comment on specifics, just to say that those, those, that's a very important uh, area of work, ongoing work, and we're continuing to, um, uh, to deepen our cooperation in this area. Mm -hmm. um, India has been talking about how it is the voice of the Global South. How do you see these comments as India hosted the Voice of the Global South Summit as well? Well, I think that India's G20 presidency year really offers um, uh, an excellent opportunity to bring together uh, the global community around these common challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that the, the experiences that we've had with the first couple of major meetings mm -hmm. under, uh, under India's G20 presidency, the finance ministers and central bank governors several days ago, the uh, foreign ministers meeting yesterday, mm -hmm. just shows the, the potential under the Indian presidency to really deliver concrete results and deepen cooperation in a variety of areas that are really important to people around the world. Mm -hmm. So debt crisis is something that has been the key focus area we saw at the finance minister's meeting as well. What's your view on the ongoing global debt crisis and of course specifically if you talk about the Indian subcontinent there are countries like Sri Lanka who have been majorly impacted and how much would you say that China is responsible for that? Well this issue of debt is incredibly important right now. Um, there were already vulnerabilities preceding the, the COVID pandemic but the COVID pandemic has made uh, all of these debt challenges much much worse. Uh, it's very important that that the creditor countries cooperate effectively in order to uh, alleviate these debt problems and find solutions and ways, ways forward. You asked about Sri Lanka in particular. India has shown uh, uh, real leadership in this, uh, offering assurances, what are called financing assurances, uh, that will be uh, necessary in order for uh, uh, Sri Lanka to launch its IMF program. The Paris Club, of which the United States is a part, has also offered those financing assurances. That's basically a way of saying that we are pledging that we're going to uh, provide debt relief that will help get Sri Lanka on a sustainable course. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, China hasn't provided those assurances that yet, and we very much hope that they will because China is a major creditor of Sri Lanka. And it's very important that all major creditors come together to help Sri Lanka and other countries that are suffering uh, from debt distress to find a way out uh, and, uh, and make, uh, stabilize the economic situation and lay the groundwork for, uh, again, a return to rising living standards in these countries. Mm -hmm. So their plans of a haircut when it comes to the G20 countries, when it comes to the debt uh, issue, what's your view on that? Well, different countries are going to require different things. Um, and one, one commitment that countries that offer these financing assurances make is that they will provide debt relief in line with the calculations of the IMF. So the IMF does something, prepares something called a debt sustainability analysis, mm -hmm. which examines the, the future expected repayments on debt mm -hmm. relative to the country's capacity to repay. And when a country like the India or the Paris Club offers financing assurances, it's a commitment to provide debt relief such that that trajectory of repayments will be sustainable with the country's capacity over time. Mm -hmm. And so it's very important that uh, when a country is willing to undertake difficult economic reforms and do its part to put its economy back on the right track, that the creditor countries also be willing to provide uh, the debt relief that's compatible with making those economic plans successful. Mm -hmm. And India has done this in the case of Sri Lanka, the Paris Club has, and we look forward to China also joining in on that. Mm -hmm. And what has been the U.S. role when it comes to supporting Sri Lanka amidst this, uh, the, the economic crisis it's going through? Well, the, the key and most important at the beginning is to make sure that the humanitarian needs are met um, when this crisis really intensified last year. Um, and now we've been very supportive of, of Sri Lanka trying to get an IMF program launched. Um, 
the, the enabling condition for that program to be launched is really the agreement among all the creditors to provide Sri Lanka with the necessary debt relief. Mm -hmm. And so we hope that we're close to this, this uh, time when, uh, when China would join India, join the Paris Club in offering these assurances so that we can have the launch of an IMF program. Uh, to help Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So my last question to you is, uh, we have seen Pakistan going through a terrible economic crisis. What's your view on that? How Americans can support it and how much do you blame China for that? Well, th there are many challenges right now in, in, uh, in Pakistan and, and again, humanitarian challenges have been very significant. And so the United States has been uh, played a major role in trying to uh, provide humanitarian assistance related to the floods and other displacements that have, uh, that have affected Pakistan. Um, there's also going to be the need to try to uh, provide uh, a uh, support, economic support, including international economic st support to stabilize that situation. We're very engaged on, uh, on those discussions and we hope to, to play a, uh, a supporting role, again, uh, as is the case when uh, countries are going through these kinds of crises, to get the economic policies in the country in the right place, supported appropriately from financial assistance from the outside. And so we look forward to uh, joining with other countries, including the IMF, the, the institutions like the IMF, to provide that support. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thanks.